I have a really crazy story from Road America. So my first race in NASCAR, I had no idea of the the performance gap from the big teams to the small teams. So I showed up Friday morning for practice thinking, you know, we'll go out and get as much practice laps as we can. You know, this is great. Well, I get there. The car's not even ready. The car's in pieces. They're piecing this car together in the oh, parking boy. lot. And because the car was so far back in points, it was just mm-hmm. basically in the center. Like it wasn't even behind a trailer. It was kind of all by itself. And it just looked like a, a really janky organization. And we we're just kind of looking at the car, me and my dad and evaluating our options. You know, obviously we're going to miss some practice and just do what we can. You know, we're thankful yeah. to be there. And I go out and make a couple practice laps. I think it was first practice on Friday and the car was decent. I think we were sitting like 23rd, 24th in practice, which we were happy about. Really good, uh, but yeah. no, no, nobody on the team had really given me the lowdown and, and the rundown of, you know, these are used parts. These are used brakes. And I found out later that these weren't even road course brakes. These were like mile and a half brakes. They basically just piece this car <laughs> together. And I found out, I mean, I did like two or three laps in a row and I wasn't even pushing hundred percent and I'm going into turn one and I'm pumping my brake, pumping my brake and all of a sudden it just goes to the floor. And what happened was they were a mile and a half front brakes. The brake bleeder screw was stripped. So they Healy coiled it. And when they Healy coiled it, that expanded at a different rate. And it loosened the bolt up. So I lost all fluid going towards the front brakes. So I had rear brakes. So when the pedal went to the floor, the, the front brakes weren't working. The rear brakes locked up. I spin. Luckily, I spun. That slowed the car down enough. And by the time I hit the gravel, I didn't hit the wall. Somehow I didn't hit the wall. And it, it was scary for me. I mean, at 165, 70 miles per hour, oh, going yeah. to one, you lose brakes. You know, then I start questioning, does this team even know what they're doing? You know? <laughs> and and I, I'm hearing from the drivers telling me, like, you got to be careful driving for Victor Bica. So that was, uh, that was practice one. So for practice two, I knew the car wasn't going to be ready. We, we just kind of all agreed. Let's just watch practice from the sidelines. You know, we'll get yeah. the car ready for practice for qualifying. So my dad and I are on, on our little mopeds riding around the track, watching practice two. All of a sudden my car goes by my car that I'm racing goes by on the track. track. I'm like, yes. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, did they take me out of the seat because I did something wrong? So I'm freaking out. The first one was Atlanta Motor Speedway, which was the second race of the year. Um, my buddy and I actually drove down from Wisconsin because we didn't have the money for a flight ticket, honestly. Uh, or we just wanted to save money. So I drove down, I think three quarters of the way down there. It was Thursday. I get a phone call from Victor basically saying your car, it wasn't ready. We couldn't bring it to the track. So we loaded the hauler with just the one car. Steven likes going to be driving it. Your car's not there. So I'm like, well, we're already this far. Let's at least go. You know, yeah. I knew at that time I was running, I was going to run some cup races for Rick Ware later in the year. So I figured let's just go hang out with Rick Ware, uh, hang out with the bike team. Uh, so while, while I was there, that's when Victor told me, well, you know, we made a mistake this time. We'll bring you to Vegas and you'll race. Well, I, uh, not, not bring me, but you know, that's you fly to say, Vegas yeah. and you'll yeah. race, you'll race. So, so then my girlfriend and I flew to Vegas um, on our own dime, bought, yep. bought the hotel. It was probably 15 or $2,500 expenses. And Jeez, I get there man. and they had so many parts they were taking off the first car to put on the second car so I could make laps. Like they forgot the window net. They forgot the seat belts and they forgot all forgot these different the parts. the window net? Yes, a lot. They forgot. I mean, they're pulling parts off of Stephen Lake's car so I can make a lap. And because at the time I had never oh, ran a lap Lord. at Vegas. So they get everything off Steven's car that we needed. I'm in the car with my helmet on ready to go. We don't head up and the car wouldn't start. And there's like 15 minutes of practice left. And they're like, all right, abort, abort. We can't let Josh run. We need to get Steven out. Cause Steven's their primary driver. He's the one that was bringing the money for the season. It wasn't much, but basically they took everything off my car. They just put back or they put on, put it back on Steven likes car. And he made a lap. And yeah. then he, um, he, he made the race. I think there were only 43 cars or 40 cars at the time. He made the race. Ran a couple laps in the race, had a right front tire go down because I don't think they had the correct camera or correct setup. He he destroyed that car. And um, it turns out that that car that he destroyed, they pieced together in the parking lot of some casino. And that was the car they wanted me to race in Phoenix the next week. I didn't this know that. This is like a horror there. story, man. It, it, it really is. There's so <laughs> many bits and pieces of this story I'm leaving out too. So yeah. at the end of the day, after Vegas, Victor basically told me, he's like, you know, you fly to Vegas or fly to Phoenix next week. If something goes wrong, I'll, I'll reimburse you. I'll reimburse you for all your travel expenses. I'm like, all right. I know is, where this is going. A win. This is a win. So uh, 